Hey everybody and welcome to another lesson. In this one, I want to talk about the include statement that is part of Twig and how it works in the most basic sense, but also how we can pass data using this include statement. So the include statement in Twig really does two things for us. It allows us to include templates into other templates. And that means we can chunk our template code up into reusable pieces and then include it where necessary. But it also acts as a transporter for data. So we can transport data from one template into another one. So we're going to look at the latter thing, which is how it is transporting data and look at a few different ways that we can use it to transport data and what's supported in Twig. Let's first talk about the default scope or what Twig calls the active context. By default, the Twig include statement sets the scope of available data to all variables that are available globally in the parent template. And this is what's known in Twig parlance as active context. So as an example, uh, if I have this variable here and I set a variable called title to entry.title like that, when I include another template like this, let's just say I include something like include slash uh, year archive, something like that. So when I include this year archive template in this template that we're in, the variable title and its value will be automatically included because they are considered to be in the active context of Twig. We don't need to pass the variable. We don't need to declare it. We don't need to, you know, add it in here to the include statement. It's automatically included as part of the active context. Now that's how it happens automatically with active context, but we can also explicitly pass the data as well. So let's look at how that works, but we're going to use a real world example here. So I have here an entry template and in here, I am uh, doing a year archive that looks something like this. And if you watched the other lesson that I had on using the batch filter, then you, this will look familiar. But basically, we were creating a little year archive here. And the idea here is that I want this year archive markup, the template code to be reused because maybe I'm going to have a news archives by year, but I might also have something like press releases archives by year or blog posts by year. And I'd like this little chunk of code here to be reusable, where the only thing I pass in that's different would be the data that actually generates the years. So let's look at how we can use include to make that happen. So in our code, the main thing here is this for loop, where we're batching all the way to here, this is the bit that will be reusable, the stuff up here is where we're actually setting the variables to prepare our data that we then iterate and batch in order to output the years. So all of this is specific to this template. But this other stuff right here, we can drop into a shared template and then include it. So let me just take that out and drop it into there. And we'll save that one. And we'll save this change here as well. So now I need to include this template. So I can include shared slash underscore year archive list like that. All right, so in our year archive list, we are looking for this years collection variable which is uh, an array, and we're going to batch it. So years collection is set is an array that we set here and that we populate here. So with active context, years collection should be available automatically. Let's see if we get the same thing on the front end. So if I reload here, you can see we get the same thing, which means that is working as we expect. Active context in the include statement is working. And that variable is being passed into that shared template. Now one thing I might want to do on a per section basis is I might want to change the batch number, I want to control that by section. So I want this right here to be dynamic. So how would we do that? 
Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to pass in what that batch count would be. Now, we explicitly pass the data using the with keyword in Twig. And this is saying include this template with this data. Now, we're going to just create a quick hash with the key of batch count and the value of six. All right. And now, if I go over to our included template, let's output batch count just to see that it works. When we reload, you can see that it's output here, batch count. So we know that this template is now getting that explicitly passed data. Now, if I take that out and then update the batch filter from being statically defined with this batch count to being dynamically defined using the batch count variable that's being passed. And of course, since we are working with a filter and we're not outputting this to the screen, we don't need our double curly braces. So we save that. And now let's take a look. We'll reload. And there we go. So now it's working again. And we have our six items per column here. And it's batching it properly. So if I go here and I say this is another one, I want to batch this in fours. Just change that and check it out here. And there we go. Now we have it dynamically set to four per batch. And we can now dynamically adjust that batch count when we include the template. Now, in addition to including this data using with, in addition to all the data that is part of the active context, we can also exclude everything except what we explicitly pass here with the with keyword. And we do that by adding the only keyword at the end here. So we include this template with this batch count hash here, but only with this batch count hash. And that means it'll exclude anything else that's in the active context, including the years collection variable here with the array that we set. Let's see how that looks in the template. So we reload. And you can see we get a template error. It says variable years collection does not exist. And that's because we eliminated that because we're no longer using the active context. We remove only and save that and then look at our browser. Reload. Now we're back. So now we're including active context again because we removed only. Now, the only keyword can really come in handy if we wanted to, for example, exclude other data so that our include was only using data that we passed. If we wanted to override some data, perhaps we could do it with only. In addition to using only with our with keyword and some data, we can also say only like this, which will then only include the template and not include data from the active context. So our result will be the same as before, which is that years collection variable will error out and say that it does not exist. But we're also not passing in anything else. We're just saying are we've narrowed our scope down to just the include template. We don't want anything from the active context. So let's go back and use our with keyword and save it. And now we have created a include statement so we could break out this year archive list, pass in the batch count to it, and make that batch count dynamic. So there's lots of different ways of using the include statement with data, but at least now you know how, what active context is, how you can override it or do away with it by narrowing the scope of the include. So thanks for following along and for watching this lesson. If you want to learn some more tricks for using the include statement to make your Twig templates in Craft CMS as powerful as they can be, check out the flexible Twig templates course that I have. In fact, if you go to majingo.com slash craft dash essentials, there is a bundle of courses. I've put together this master class of using Craft and Twig. Go there, grab that. And it'll have not only that twig, flexible twig templates class, but all of the other courses that you need in order to get really, really good at using craft for your next project. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next lesson.